my website right now and download my free course on alternate picking mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to alternate picking mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. Uh, how do you become good at um, at listening or hearing what goes on in the music? I used to <clears throat> I used to have a hard time doing that, and I was uh, at some point you and I was into all kinds of styles when I started out. I was into you know jazz, uh, fusion, rock, metal, uh, pop for that matter, anything, um, and I wanted to know how things worked. And jazz was just a mystery to me. How could they improvise over those chord changes at that level of speed? Because I, I thought that they were doing like we do in rock, right? They have a scale, and then in rock, we just have one scale fits all the chords, right? But in jazz, you have to follow the chord progression. And I thought they were just, you know, changing scales, having the same kind of freedom playing all across the neck, and then they could just see when the, you know, when the chord changes happen. They could go anywhere. But that's not the case uh, for most guitar players. But... But I tried to, to analyze my way out of it because in, in the theory of things or the lessons I found, the books I borrowed at the library, they, they didn't really, you know, it was like it was an incomplete explanation because I wanted to learn how to improvise over chord changes, right? I wanted to have total freedom like you have, you can develop on a piano, but the guitar is such a, you know, it has the same note in multiple places on the neck. That makes it really hard to, to, to do that kind of thing. But so I started listening to Charlie Parker solos, like a saxophone player, right? Uh, and, and it was impossible to hear what went on. So I, I started, you know, I, my dad had this old uh, tape recorder. And I, just, you know, it shows how old I really am. Uh, and, and you could slow that down to half the speed. So I, I would record the album from, you know, <laughs> over to the tape recorder and then slow it down to half the speed. And then I could go, do, do, bo, do, do. Oh, uh, stop that. And I could, okay, and then I could, okay, that's what he's playing. And then I you loop that, right? And then he would play some, and I, would, and I would try to play that. And after I've learned just a little bit of it, I knew what chords it was because I, you know, couldn't hear that right off, but I, you know, borrowed the book. I, I knew what chord it's supposed to be. And then I could kind of analyze my way to what scale is this? What arpeggio is it? What is he doing? Right? And that was such an, I didn't learn to play jazz in that way, but that was such an, a rewarding experience because it really made me, it enabled me to use my ear and then, but I couldn't do it at full speed. That was impossible, but I could slow it down. Right, so I could use my ear, and I did that for days and months, and you know, a little each day, and I really developed the ability to hear what is the bass doing, right? What's the guitar doing? What what note is that? And so that developed my ear to a, to a really high degree, and I've you know, uh, benefit benefited from that ever since. But the problem with training your ear is that you can't do it slow. When with everything else, you can just slow down, right? You can just if you want to learn to play a song, you can just slow it down. So okay, that's the first chord, and then. Good idea, right? You can scale the speed. <laughs> or if you want to learn to play a riff or a lick, you can just slow down and then practice at a slow tempo, then speed it up. When it comes to ear training, you can't slow down stuff, right? You have to listen to what goes on when he's... Then you, or you want to learn the riff he's playing, right? And you just, whoa, whoa, what's going on there? So that's a really hard discipline to develop your ear when the bar is set that high. Uh, but things have changed. And this video is actually about a piece of software that I recommend that you buy, you know, flat out. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not an affiliate. I don't get money from that purchase, but it's such a simple piece of software. And what it does is just, you can load any track, any riff, any song that you know into that piece of software on your computer, on your, you know, uh, device, your iPad, your iPhone or whatever. And then you can slow it down, but the pitch doesn't change. So it's just like, okay, band, could you play that in half the tempo but still remain the same pitch, the same chords, so I can listen for what goes on? And that's a genius way of developing your ear. 
because suddenly you can listen to that whole song and you can bo do da beepin do do stop and if it's it, it can be rhythms you you want to learn it can be a riff it can be a solo it can be anything and you know these days we have everything on YouTube if you want to learn a song you can always find somebody on YouTube who just you know sits you down say this is how you do or you can find the tabs and we don't develop our ear uh, because it's so easy because there's so many resources out there but I warmly recommend that you start you know you know take a number that you really like and then develop your ear in this way. It's a very practical way of doing it. Instead of having these exercises you do that are really boring. I hate exercises, right? You have to listen for this interval. Googie. Okay, what is that? Who I don't know. It's just that a fifth or whatever. No, it's not. Okay. Googie. Okay, what is that? It's just a, you know, it's, it seems so devoured of any excitement and it's so far from actual music. But when you're listening uh, to a song that you really, really like, and you're li listening to it in half tempo. It's a totally different experience. And I recommend that you listen for the bass, try to play the bass line, try to play the riff, the soul of the melody, whatever, and then get used to doing that every single day. Uh, you'll find a link below this YouTube video. You can go check it out. You can download a free trial. And as I said, I don't need to do a demo of it because you're, you, you're started right away. It's so simple. And that's really such a, an important thing when you choose the tools you, you use. That I use GarageBand for, for arranging or for creating jam tracks, for instance, and composing. And most people go, jam, seriously? Like GarageBand? Oh, that's for amateurs, right? That's for people who can't create music. But it's so, it, it's so fast. I can go in, I don't have envelope filters and chorus and all kinds of effects I can put on, so there's no wastage of time. And I'm not spending half a day on an idea I had only to discover that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't worth spending that time on. Because I just, you know, bam, I can go in right away, put drums to it, the, the, the bass, the everything, and then I have something that sounds like music. And then you can always go to your advanced Cubase, whatever you use on your computer to create all the little details. But GarageBand, because it's simple, it allows you to be productive. It allows you to test and try your ideas. And that's what you want. And that's what Riff Master Pro does as well. It's instant. You're just working with it right away. You don't have to, oh, uh, how do I, what, what is that, can, can I, right? So, and you can loop little places in the music and have it play really easy and have it play them over and over again so you can listen to them over and over again. So it's a really neat, nice tool and I warmly recommend that you start your ear training journey by going taking that uh, piece of software and then using it every day, you know, like five minutes every day. Or take another song every week, you must do another song. Create rules like that, put it in your calendar, put up post-it notes so you don't forget and then add that to your practice schedule. Um, I really urge you to do this. Don't buy the piece of software if you're not going to use it. Create a plan and then go for it and then develop your ear to a level that most people don't because they don't want to do ear training. But you want to do ear training because you're listening to your favorite songs as you do it. So <laughs> I warmly recommend it. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.